Well, a lot of you have probably heard about this concept of DeFi, about yield farming, and it probably sounds very attractive, but perhaps a little bit difficult. So Binance, being the amazing company we are, have brought in some real experts today to let you know exactly what DeFi is, exactly what Binance Smart Chain is, which may explain um, BNB's meteoric rise. And then of course, it's not um, over until we actually show you how you can do it as well. So we also have some amazing practical sessions that are gonna show you how to transact on Binance Smart Chain, how to actually yield farm and earn in DeFi. Um, but unfortunately, I am not a DeFi expert. And as I said, we've brought in the experts for you today. So our first speaker is very well known and we know that you are really gonna enjoy his content. So if you've ever wondered, what is DeFi? What is Binance Smart Chain? How do they work? And why would somebody use them? Well, to answer these questions and more, we have with us today, Marvelous. Marvelous, let's greet the audience. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you very much. Good evening and good evening, everybody. Oh, I can I see the you. audience is very excited for you. So um, without, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to you and your amazing session. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. My name is Marvelous Macaulay, and I'll be taking us on the concept of DeFi. Right. Um, so basically, I would say I, I wouldn't want to take most of our time. So I'm not going to go straight to the point. I'm going to, I'll say Bitcoin was the, um, the beginning of DeFi, right? You know, the purpose of um, the, uh, the creation of Bitcoin from Satoshi Nakamoto was to, to remove financial power from the centralized bodies, all right? So um, he created Bitcoin to, to bring finance into the decentralized level. So I would always say, I always tell people that Bitcoin was the beginning or the genesis of decentralized finance. So. What exactly is decentralized finance? Yeah, decentralized finance is short. Is um, it has a short form that is DeFi. Most most people call it DeFi or open finance. But the concept of decentralized finance um, talks about uh, building uh, an ecosystem, an ecosystem of the well-known financial um, um, activities or the traditional financial activities, and putting all these all these things you know as a traditional finance on the blockchain. All right. So it's like bringing um bringing your normal financial activities your normal banking activities your insurance activities and all that you do in the normal centralized uh, world and the normal centralized way you do it bringing everything and putting it on the blockchain now the blockchain is designed to be decentralized and once you you, you take all of these financial activities and put them on the blockchain we have what now we refer as the decentralized finance all right so if I'm to make it simpler for probably people who don't really know what DeFi is or people who have not really heard of what DeFi is, I would say it's your normal depositing and withdrawing, borrowing and lending that you do uh, in your normal banking system. Like if you go to the bank now, you have a um, institution where you deposit money and you withdraw money, or you can also, you can also maybe you want to start a business or whatever it is you want to do, you go and borrow money from your bank. All right. Now that's all those, all those, Characteristics, all, all those activities now can be done on the blockchain. They've made it easier um, for people to access those traditional uh, financial activities on the blockchain or through the blockchain. The, 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 one of, the, one of the, the good things about DeFi is that it now gives people ease of access because uh, the traditional finance, the normal uh, financial system doesn't make it easy for people who are uh, uh, places where there's maybe kind of extreme poverty or people who can't pay for financial activities to have them. That is your banks won't open um, good banking, uh, how do I put it, good banking halls or good banking systems in places where they, they're not going to benefit, all right? But the, the DeFi and decentralized finance built, that is the one built on the blockchain has made it possible for anybody with an internet connection to connect and access the lending protocols, the borrowing, um, and every other way you can, you can actually, uh, benefits from the DeFi space. And I can tell you categorically, I can tell you from experience that many people, many of us have benefited from the, 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 the DeFi space. So basically, like I said before, it takes 
it takes the activities and the characteristics of your traditional finance, your, your banking system and all what you have and, and brings them to the blockchain and then makes it possible you know, for everyone to access it. Another advantage is this, another advantage is this, it's no longer in the hands of just a few people. Everybody can, you know, uh, make decisions concerning a particular protocol. If once once you once you want to be once you're part of a governance for a particular protocol, you can as well uh, assist or vote, you know, to make decisions on what happens to that um, uh, that protocol or what happens with that protocol. You understand? So the DeFi space has actually come with a lot of goodies and made it possible for a lot of people to access uh, most of these things that on a normal day they wouldn't have accept, uh, accessed. And like I said before, Bitcoin is the origin of, of all this. But the, the, the problem now is that the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin blockchain only made it possible for, for, for people to access peer-to-peer -peer payments, right? Which is, I send you Bitcoin, you send me Bitcoin, I send you a particular uh, dollar worth of Bitcoin, you, you receive it or you, or you send to me. But it, 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 didn't, it did not solve um, more of the financial problems or more of the problems we are having with the traditional financial system. All right, now that, that is where Ethereum came in. And Ethereum was more like a fulfillment of the process. When Ethereum came in, when Ethereum came in, it's now brought into light the fact that we can actually borrow and lend cryptocurrencies, you know, using smart contracts. All right, follow me. Now, Ethereum came and made it possible for us to borrow and lend cryptocurrencies or um, lend on cryptocurrency protocols or blockchain protocols, you know, through the, the Ethereum um, blockchain. But this, this particular characteristic wasn't possible on the Ethereum blockchain. So when Ethereum did that, sorry, what wasn't possible on the Bitcoin blockchain rather, when Ethereum came, it made it possible for people to actually access, um, access uh, the lending, the borrowing, which is, which is basically the, the, the most important, I think the most important aspect of DeFi. Allow me to digress. That's actually the most important aspect of DeFi for me because now uh, I, I, I have something I want to do, but I have, um, I have some money in maybe Bitcoin, I have some money in Ethereum that I don't want to sell. All right? I don't want to sell this particular coin. So what do I do? I go and, um, um, how do I put it, use it as a collateral to borrow another um, another cryptocurrency. Let me see. I used to borrow um, Dai. Dai is also a stable coin, a form of stable coin. So I borrowed Dai, but my Ethereum is still there. You get my Ethereum is still there. So if Ethereum goes up, I still have probably I have this 10 Ethereum. I bought this 10 Ethereum at $300. All right. Now I put my Ethereum as a collateral to, to, to borrow, uh, let's say, um, $3,000 worth of Dai. Remember, I have 10 Ethereum. I bought at $300. All right, so I put my Ethereum um, as a collateral to borrow $3,000 out of that. My Ethereum is still there. I have my $3,000 out of that. I use it to do whatever it is I want to do, probably for my business or whatever it is I want to do. All right. And then Ethereum map pumps, I'm still doing my stuff, but the protocol and the lender are earning an interest while I'm with my DAI. Why I borrow the, the DAI from them. Follow me, please. They are still earning an interest, you know, from my from my from lending their own um, cryptocurrencies to me. But then my Ethereum is pumping. Ethereum has moved from three hundred dollars to, I think, one. It got to one thousand eight hundred and and all that. So, my Ethereum is pumping. So when I'm done with whatever it is I'm done, I'm doing with the die. I give back that die to the people like the protocol I borrowed it from. But my Ethereum now has already pumped. So I did not lose my Ethereum. You see the good thing? I didn't lose my Ethereum. Maybe if I didn't have an opportunity to lend, or sorry, to borrow that, I'd have used my Ethereum that I was supposed to hold, you get? So that's that's one of the good things. That's one of the good things. That's why I said the lending and borrowing aspect of it is one of the most important aspects of DeFi, all right? But let me take you back to the traditional banking system. If I wanted to borrow money from the traditional banking system, hmm, I would go and maybe borrow for me, I'm a Nigerian, so we use Naira here. I borrow some Naira, and then they give me very high interest rates that I have to pay, I have, and, and it keeps compounding, all right? It keeps compounding. If I don't pay at a certain time, the interest keeps compounding in addition to the capital, you know? Body, 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 um, DeFi space cures this particular uh, disease, all right? Then in the part of the lenders, in the traditional banking system, in the traditional banking system, the part, the part of the lenders, if you, you that, is a, that is depositing your money in the bank, you're actually a lender, but you don't know. You don't know you're a lender. We're actually a lender. 
because when you deposit your money in the bank, the banks actually use your money to give um, loans to people, businessmen who come, and then they earn interest on these loans that they give. But then you that deposited, that deposited the money, I'm speaking from the from, from the experience as a Nigerian, you earn nothing. Some of us put our money in the bank. Let's say you put $100,000 in, $100, in the bank. And then by the, by the end of two, three, um, two, three months, without you touching that $100,000, you won't see the same amount there. You must have dropped maybe ninety five or 90000 naira. You understand? Without you doing anything. But they have already used your money to give as loans to businessmen and organizations who, who, who use your money for to, to further their business. And then they've earned interest on these loans that they give to these people, but you are not a particle of it. But in the DeFi space, it's a direct, there's no intermediary, there's no centralized body. All right. So you 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 have you can decide to pull out your money anytime and put your money at any time. That's why you have things like staking, farming liquidity provision, and all that. And you benefit from these things directly. There's no intermediary, there's no body, there's no bank, there's no insurance company, nothing that actually costs off the profit or the benefits that's supposed to come to you. That's where that's that's another. Another place where the, the, uh, the DeFi actually wins, and I see the lending and borrowing option is one thing that very, very that's very very important in the DeFi space. All right, so let me let me go back to let me go back to to, to what I was saying. Now we talked about um, lending and borrowing, and then um, I'll let me talk to you about liquidity. Let me talk to you about liquidity. I'm not going to dive into. I want to explain something to you. Now, in your traditional banking system, in your traditional banking system. You might not have heard about it as you might not have understood it as liquidity. Get me? You might not you might not have understood it as liquidity. But when you deposit money in the bank, do you know you give them liquidity? You provide them with liquidity. Liquidity mean meaning as you put your money in the bank, they now have money. They now have liquid cash to actually move about. They have liquid cash to actually use to trade forex. They have liquid cash to trade to do business to invest and lend. It is with your money. The banks on a normal, they don't have any money. You as a customer, you as the people depositing money, give them this liquidity. And it is your liquidity that they use to do their business and earn interest, earn good money on their investment and leave you behind. That's why in Nigeria, I see a bank telling they're going to be giving you 0.1%. I mean, some give 0.01% interest annually. Some give 0.1% interest annually. But if you come to the DeFi space, if you come to the DeFi space now, you're going to see that you, when you provide liquidity in protocols in automated maker, uh, automated um, money makers like the pancake swap, um, the bakery swap, um, guinea swap, and all that, when you provide liquidity there, you earn fee, you earn interest, you earn money directly. There's no intermediary. That is the that is one of the that is one of the most important aspects of DeFi. There is no it's decentralized. There's no centralized body. There is no centralized body. It's totally decentralized. If I'm there, I'm there on my own. There is no, I own nobody anything. Whatever I earn is my own. It's coming directly to my wallet. I'm in charge of my wallet. I have my private keys. Nobody has access to it. So nobody can actually, um, you, know, you know, take what belongs to me. But when you come, when you, when you, when you bring it, when you, when you bring it back to the traditional financial and bank, traditional and banking system, you see that the reverse is the case. Because they use your money, you think they are doing you a favor. That's the misconception you have. Come on. The banks are not doing you a favor. The banks and you are the ones doing the banks a favor by giving them liquidity. If you don't put your money in the bank, they won't have liquidity to do business. They won't have anything to If it's your money that it is. All right. Let's, let, let, let's move on. Let's move on. So now you provide liquidity. I think someone else is going to be um, giving um, a, an in-depth explanation on how to provide liquidity. I think I'm more the one to do that, right? I think someone is going to be giving an in-depth understanding on how to provide liquidity. But my point is, when you provide liquidity, you have your rewards. But when you stake, you have your rewards personally. When you provide liquidity, you have your rewards personally, all right? When you farm, whatever it is you do, it's, that is why the name is decentralized finance. That is why people call it open finance. It's open. You can see it. It's on the blockchain. It's open. The, it's 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 um. Everybody can see it. Everybody can see what's happening there. Everybody can. You can go. If I okay, let, let's 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 move back. Let's move up. Let's move back to Bitcoin, the number one. Let's move back to the the, the king of cryptocurrencies. 
now and the reason why they were created and how it was created and you see that if i if i make a transaction let me say i send uh, money to uh, maybe ben i send money to ben and then ben has doubt that send that money to him he can just i can send in the transaction hash all right he takes it search, searches for a problem the other searches for it on the blockchain and he will see if i actually sent the amount how much i sent when i sent it and then know how far it has it has gone when it's uh, you know it, how far it will take to, to get to him you understand so it's actually you can't you can't you can't be cheated you can't you can't be cheated all right you can't be cheated on the when it comes to the blockchain you can't you can't be cheated when it comes to DeFi. as long as you know what to do what, what you're doing as long as you've, you've done your study you know how to actually access this these protocols and enjoy these protocols you can't be cheated so DeFi is the real deal and DeFi have been here for some time, I think since 2016 or so, when, um, um, it's when it was it started beating on the Ethereum blockchain. But here is the good news. I've not even gotten to the, I've not gotten to the speed part because I'm going to be pointing out, I'm going to be pointing out one or two challenges that the DeFi has on the blockchain network. I can't exhaust everything here. My time is very, very short. I can't exhaust everything. But then let me point out one or two problems that the, that the DeFi has currently. Now, for you to, for you to, to to successfully carry out a transaction on the on the Ethereum blockchain, you have to pay through your teeth. Now, I told you earlier that the purpose of DeFi is to give ease of access, ease of access to the uh, 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 of the financial uh, uh, financial uh, uh, system, the financial system to people who can access it normally, to people whom the banks have decided not to go to them. Or these financial um, uh, centralized organizations have decided not to go to them, probably because it's not beneficial to them being the, the financial giants, like the banks and insurance companies. All right. So the DeFi space was created to give ease of access to anybody. But how now can you tell me that I'm going to get ease of access when I'll be paying fees of probably hundred dollars sometimes? I have actually paid fees of hundred dollars. I'm not making it up. I pay fees of hundred dollars when carrying out transactions on. When kind of transactions on um can you guys still hear me? Someone is saying no audio. Can am I being heard? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you perfectly. Perfect. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now explain to me how I'm going to be having ease of access when I'm going to be paying a fee of fifty dollars or hundred dollars. Why? Because of um 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 what they call it. That's what I'm looking for. But then, but because the Ethereum blockchain has not scaled, all right, the blockchain is, is choked up and it has not scaled. So now the, the validators have an array, a plethora of transactions to confirm. So they pick and choose. They have to, they have to now because of the, the demand for confirmation, the demand for confirmation is, is high, then the prices, the fees for confirmation get high as well. It's it's simple, it's simple. Um, demand and supply. The miners now have a, a, a wide array of choices to make. All right. So the fees must definitely go high. The fees must go high because now they, they're not scaled. It's not like transactions can, can be confirmed very, very fast. If transactions could be confirmed very fast, now this is where the speed comes in. The, 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 the blockchain doesn't have speed, the Ethereum blockchain doesn't have speed. If transactions could be confirmed very, very fast, then the fees probably will not be this high. But because now it's going to be slow and the miners have um, a lot of confirmations to make. All right. So they now have to choose and then spike the, the fees. But I bring you good news. This is what the BSC, the Binance Merchant, has come or has, has it, 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 no, I wouldn't say it has come to cure. It has actually, it has actually provided a solution to it. All right. On the Binance Smart Chain, on the Binance Smart Chain, the BSC fees, I, I, I pay zero point one dollar fees. <laughs> I pay zero point one dollar fees. You can imagine. You can imagine. I pay zero point one dollar fees. I pay zero point zero one dollar times. I pay zero point zero six. Just no. The, the, the fees are really, are really, really very, very cheap. And then the scalability, the speed, the speed. You don't need to wait. If I'm doing a transaction, I'm not making this up. Most of you here know. If you're doing a transaction on Brad, let me say Uniswap, or you want to do, you want to lend uh, or borrow on Aave or Compound, you know, you 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 have to pay through your nose, and then 
you have to you have to wait a long time for transactions to confirm. And then most times, when, after waiting for probably three minutes or four minutes or even five minutes, and after paying that huge fee, you see transaction failed. <laughs> in a, in a, in, in especially it's it's worse. It's worse. It, it feels bad when you're when you're coming from a place where normally the DeFi is supposed to be protecting you. What I mean is this: I told you from the beginning that the DeFi is supposed to be making, giving you ease of access, so you can access the financial activities, this financial um, system through um, the internet wherever you are, regardless of how much you have. All right. Now, you now pay through your nose, probably pay fifty dollars, which is good, which is huge money in Nigeria. Fifty dollars is actually very big money in Nigeria. I mean, it's people's salaries. I'm not making it up. It's people's salaries. And then you pay that kind of money for, to confirm a transaction. And then transaction feels your money is gone. Your money is gone. You've wasted a lot of time. And then the money is still gone. Your transaction is still pending. That is why Binance matching is here. All right. Because all these things, when, when all the all the DeFi protocols that people go out there to look for, it's now on the Binance matching. When you're looking for lending and borrowing protocols, you can see Venus. When you're looking for something like Wi-Fi, you come to Auto Farm on the BSC. All right. When you're looking for AMMs, you come to Pancake Swap. You come to um, um, BSCX. You come to what are they call Bakery. All right. When you're looking for, if you want to partake in IDOs, you come to BSC Pad. BSC Pad had an IDO. I think that should be last week or two weeks ago. I can't remember when when the the exact. Yes, Drew Swap as well. Drew Swap, Drew Swap is also doing very marvelously well. All right. So if you if you come to if you if you come to um ideals, BSC Pad did an ideal, and the first idea they did went 250x. People who bought at the ideals were benefiting like their 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 what they call it in the, um their their return on investment was over 250x. All right. Those who bought the next idea they did, which was a uh, BSC view, that one went over 100 eggs. So you can understand that BSC, the Binance Smart Chain, has come to actually, to actually fulfill, it has come to actually fulfill the purpose of DeFi, bringing it, make, giving it the ease of access, making it easier and fast, because DeFi is nothing without speed. I mean, one of the problems that we complain about the traditional system, the traditional banking system and traditional finance uh, system is speed. Because if let's say I have an aunt in the US and she wants to send me money, all right, she wants to send me money, she's going to have to maybe send it through MoneyGram or Western Union and all that and all that. And before it gets to me, it takes maybe three to four days. And then they charge ridiculous fees on the money. If she sends me $200, I'm probably going to be getting $180. All right. So if we are going to be condemning the traditional finance system of those things, then there's no point. Of, of condemning it if we are going to be falling for the same issues. That's why Binance Smart Chain is here, all right? Because it makes it now, it's, it's faster, it's cheaper, all right? And you don't have to pay through your teeth. You don't have to wait a long time. You can do you can do everything concerning DeFi on the Binance Smart Chain. I think my time is, uh, I, I saw something about my, is my time up, please? Okay. Okay, I think okay, I have just a few minutes. Okay, so basically, um, to wrap up, I just want to, yeah, Pancake Swap. Pancake Swap is a is a decentralized exchange. Pancake Swap is a decentralized exchange on 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 the Binance Smart Chain. Um, uh, the Bakery Swap as well is a decentralized exchange. The Venus is a lending and borrowing protocol. Um, um, Auto Farm does the same thing. Yen Finance does. That is, it it, it gives you it gives you it, it tells you the best protocol to use. From an array of protocols on the on the on the on that particular blockchain. So AutoFarm is doing what Yen Finance does. Yen Finance does on the Ethereum blockchain. All right. So I'm here to tell you, welcome to the Binance Smart Chain. I think my time is up. <laughs> I think my, my time is up. Um, please, am I is my time up? I I don't know. I, I, there are too many messages. Here. I can't really pick out what you guys are saying. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> so unfortunately. Uh, we've come to the end of a very, very interesting session. Uh, I know there's a few questions a lot of you are asking. Where can I get the recording? Um, so if you want to catch Marvelous' session, you can catch the full recap on a Binance YouTube channel. And Marvelous, just in case anyone wants to get a hold of you, 
Um, would you be able to just maybe drop your handle um, for us in the chat? I know a oh, lot okay. of people have been asking for it. All right, I'll, I'll thank, do you, that now. thank you so much for that. Okay, thank so you very much. a lot of you have also been asking, uh, okay, this sounds great, it makes so much sense, but how do we use it? Um, how do we use Binance Smart Chain? How do we use PancakeSwap? How do we use your finance? Well, as you know, Binance is all about giving you access and making it practical for you. So next up, if you're from South Africa, it'll be a very, very familiar face for you. Next up, we have Lindley Pillay, who is a crypto educator and Binance angel for South Africa. Um, he is an absolute staple across all of the crypto communities in South Africa. He is a very knowledgeable guy, and he is going to be showing us today, how do you use your Binance chain wallet with your Binance account? And how do you add liquidity to things like PancakeSwap and Beefy Finance, for example? So Lindley, I know your session is one that all of the viewers are very excited for. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly. So Lindley, I know everyone is a lot more excited for your session than to hear me speaking. So take it away. Okay, so they're not gonna wanna see my face, but let's see if I can share. Hello everybody, I am Lindley Pillay. You can see my screen now. Perfectly. Okay, so I will settle on how to quickly make money for yourself to earn passively using PancakeSwap and Beefy Finance. But I just wanted to prove Marvelous's point quickly. So this is Uniswap, which is arguably the most popular DEX of them all, the one that started everything, or at least the one that created the AMM. So let's say I wanted to buy something, swap my ETH that I have for, we'll call it egg token, because that exists actually. And let's say I wanted to buy for the max amount that I could, it will give me 440 egg, it will use all the ETH there, but if I eat swap, I'm going to see that it costs pretty much the, the gas fee is more than I actually have in there and more than what I'm buying. So needless to say, I don't use Uniswap that much. So PancakeSwap is probably the easiest way you're going to learn to earn using DeFi protocols at least. And there's two terms that we have to understand. One is the pools and one is the farms. And I know it's almost like we have a unique sense of humor in the crypto space. But the, the first thing you're going to have to do is go to Binance. You buy, let's say, BUSD or BNB, and then you literally withdraw it from there. Now, you can also link a Binance Smart Chain wallet. Now, you saw MetaMask earlier. So there's two ways we can connect to Binance Smart Chain. We can either say, okay, we, now I've set this up before. So Binance Smart Chain and MetaMask will now interact with Binance Smart Chain. You'll see it changes to BNB when I go to ETH. It's Ethereum. But what I found is I find it better to work with Binance Smart Chain's actual wallet. So it's similar to MetaMask. You can add it. You can go to Chrome Web Store, search for Binance Smart Chain. It will come up and you can set it up like a normal wallet. And essentially, you just copy that address. We go to Binance. And if I wanted to send cake, I could withdraw cake to there. And there we go. I'm not going to do that because there's already cake here. But the first thing you come there, you'll see unlock wallet, unlock wallet. But let's not focus on that for a moment. Look at the APR. And, and this is what you need to do if you want to earn passive income. Is basically search what is the best returns here. And these change daily. So you're going to have to look all the time. Who remembers the Alice launch this week? Um, you see the 139%. Now... For me, I must say, I stick with cake. I'm a, uh, I'm a simple guy. And essentially, I just need to hit connect. 
I'll choose, it will give me options. I can connect this to Trust Wallet via Wallet Connect, whichever wallet up here. If I choose MetaMask, I will have to have it on the BSC network. But because I have Binance Chain Wallet, it will connect immediately. So this will now obviously show me what I have here. So I have put 119 cake into this pool. And that earns pretty much half a cake per day. So this, uh, the last time I harvested was yesterday. So 0.6 cake per day. Now, if you look at the price of cake there, it's $9.90. So if I'm earning half a cake a day, that's four and a half dollars that I'm earning every day. So if I want to earn one old cake, I just need to double that amount there, which isn't an easy task. So lucky for me, I bought cake in the early days when it was, uh, I think it was $1.70 or something. But let's take a look. So if I harvest that now, it will put it into my wallet. So I think I can just do this. You know, when I share my screen, everything's slower. So I need to view that on BSC just to show you what the wallet is like. So now we can see there is 5.5 cake in there. So if I hit harvest, it's going to give me a pop-up message. And you know, today it will now misbehave. So we'll give that its time. And similarly, if you don't feel like working with that one, you can just use Beefy Finance, which is another one. So Beefy Finance, once again, yield optimizing for Binance Smart Chain. We love our humor in crypto. You just close that one. So you'll see all these things will sort of load until I add a wallet. And because it's connected to my wallet already, it will see it, hopefully. You know, trusted to do it today. <laughs> what I want to do, I'm just going to refresh this page. While we wait for that. So bakery swap doesn't connect directly to the Binance Smart Chain wallet. What we can do is add it to MetaMask. So MetaMask can control the transaction. So I'll put it on BSC. And we can look for earning opportunities in bakery swap. So what I've done before the, the session was to move Alice to this wallet address. And we can check that address to make sure that we have Alice there. And there we go. Alice, Alice is living there comfortably. And what we're going to do is just now, before we can put Alice there to earn us whatever they are offering, we need to approve that transaction. See, MetaMask. And look at the transaction fees, 18 cents. These things are all very fast. So if we want to check the transaction, we have to kind of be quick. See, not... Well, it said nine seconds ago. Okay. And we go back there again. Now we will have to just stake. We'll stake the max. And once this is confirmed, it's not working out exactly, but that is basically BNB. So what we can do, remember 1498. So 1498. 40 cents. And there we go. It, it has put that into the contract now. Basically, we'll just sit back and earn on that. And we can come and check all the time. It's always better to have ones that doesn't have a percentage yet because they, they're working out the results for us. Um, I want to see if this is going to behave suddenly. So there's one way for me to get around that, and that is to force quit. Sorry, but this happens all the time. I've got multiple things on my Chrome, so 
it tends to misbehave sometimes. It's good that we have the problems live. So we will just and we will connect again. I will need to put in my password. Let's see if it's behaving today. So we were in the pools last time. Let's try that. It should give me the pop up here, but it's just for today, just not behaving. Other thing Pancake Swap has is basically an exchange, and I will need to connect my wallet again. Still swearing at me. So we can just do that. We will use MetaMask for now. And you will need to connect it and make sure that it can write to the smart contract. So because I'm using this wallet now, I will need to transfer some BNB over to show you what I wanted to do. What I actually need is this wallet address. And I can just copy that. And I will send BNB to that address. And it'll be 0 0.2. I never know whether it likes a comma or a dot. And it's as simple as that. We should be able to see the transaction. Today is the 19th thing. We will see the it arrives there. So good luck trying that on Ethereum these days because it's not that fast. So I just needed to check something. So what one normally does, you, looking at the farms, you look at the return rates. So this pulls up everything that is hot right now. And you know, sometimes you get a luck. So there's 315%. This is APR, so it's per year. It changes every day, so you always have to check. So let's say we choose Dusk BNB. We now need to create Dusk. And we need to look for Dusk. And first need to buy some Dusk. So what I'm going to do is choose max, and then I will half that. And let's say half that again. Now there's a reason why I'm halving it all the time, because I need to match the amount of BNB when I post that as a liquidity pair. And then to provide liquidity in the exchange side, it's very simple. So I have to build that. Um, Pair basically, and on this side, I will say add liquidity, and I need to look for dusk. You can see dusk the 30 that I bought is there, and I will go max. So now the equal amount of BNB will match it on the other side. I don't know why it doesn't supply. I need to approve it first. And 13 cents, I can't help but mention that all the time. Okay. 
And once that approves, you can see the supply. Well, button or something will be activated. Just give that a moment and see if we can connect to PSC here. Okay. At least that's behaving now. Maybe we shouldn't move away from here. I wish I could say it doesn't do this normally, but you kind of have to fight until it works all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to supply that now. Confirm supply. And that basically allows on the deck side for people to do the transactions so there is liquidity of that particular pair. But ultimately, all that means is you have this little liquidity token in your wallet and now we need to go to the farm and say I want to earn off that liquidity pair and I'm going to connect MetaMask and we created a Dusk pair, Dusk BNB for, to kind of make a return like that and this will earn in cake so what we need to do is enable this one once again. Now, if you can see all these type of transactions needs to be done, even if you're using Ethereum network, can you imagine a $40 fee every time you're doing a simple transaction like that? You are going to be spending a few hundred dollars. And that doesn't work if you only have a few hundred dollars. And I mean, 30, 30 Dusk, I'm not even sure what Dusk is valued at. It's 42 cents. It doesn't make sense to be paying that amount of dollars. So you can see here. So now I've got that liquidity pay of 1.1. I can just go max or confirm. And then I don't need to think about it because that's earning me cake while I'm sleeping. So on this particular wallet, I've only got this one. If we go here and this is connected to the Binance Smart Chain wallet. You'll see I've got a few liquidity pairs. So I obviously a regular, so you don't always see the returns. And I don't really need to come and look at it all the time, but one must check that the APR is still fairly decent. So as long as over 100%, I'm good with it because you can just scale up how much you're going to put in there. So for the pool side, Right now, 119 cake would probably be about $1,200. It's fine for that to earn half a cake a day. It really is swearing at me today. It doesn't, it's probably going to do it when I end the sharing. But um, I'm seeing a lot of hands raised. Does anybody have questions? Suddenly, it's all just coming on my screen. So that's... Unfortunately, I can't show that today now. It's just... I promise you it's going to work when, when I'm done here. But essentially, if you can understand that on the trade side is how that fee, fees are being earned because people are exchanging all the time and they're paying fees for that. But... When I eat liquidity, then I change from being the person trading to the bank, basically. I know we all hate the word bank, but it's better to be the bank earning the fees than to be the customer paying the fees. So if you have funds that you want to earn for you, Binance Smart Chain is by far the cheapest way to do these transactions and to start earning because it only takes a day or two before you're in profit, basically. And all you have to do is leave your your funds in there and if you watch the recording you can go back and see that you have to build the pair that you want to earn from and to do that you must come and look at the farms and look at this and decide okay well Tixel is popular I know that so they're matching it to BUSD so then you'll have to get BUSD and Tixel and then 
on the liquidity side, add liquidity, change that to BUSD. I don't think I have BUSD there. And then you will have to put Tixel on the other side. And then you will have to build that liquidity pair and then create it here, go back and add liquidity here. And you can decide to do what you want to do because Cake BNB has a 40x multiplier. That's a good thing. And I know people moan and moan and say, okay, well, why would you choose Cake if it's only 125 and there's 140 odd there? There's a little thing called impermanent loss, which is a bit complicated and I'm not going to try and explain it right now, but because I'm posting cake and earning cake, I'm always in cake. So therefore, I can't have downside outside of cake. Because in impermanent loss, if I'm going to create that liquidity pay, I'm almost solidifying that both that the tokens are at the dollar value of the time. If the if let's say BNB went up in that time, I'm not going to be benefiting from BNB going up because it's locked into a dollar value at the time of the liquidity pair. I think that's the simplest way I can put it. But um, when I'm posting cake, I'm always in cake and I'm earning cake. So therefore, I can always, I, I, I won't be susceptible to the other side of the pair doing something else in price. If that makes any sense. I'm not sure. I'm not, I can't see the chat. So is my time up? Uh, just about, Lindley. Um, I see a lot of people are slightly um, less technical. Well, you know, it, it, DeFi, as you can see, is an absolutely amazing space. Um, and while we wish that we could make you into a Binance Smart Chain and DeFi expert in 90 minutes, um, unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult. So all of these concepts that you've seen are explained in detail on Binance Academy. So you literally just type in Binance Academy. Um, you want to know about Pancake Swap? Once you're there, you type in Pancake Swap, and it'll take you step by step through getting your wallet, making transactions, and what liquidity means, what pool means, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we hope we gave you a little bit of insight um, into what these platforms are, how they work. But the show is not over next, um, and all the way from across the shores. Um, in the beautiful country of France, we have um, a, a cer certified DeFi expert with us today. Um, and if any of you are familiar with the Binance and crypto space out in France, his name might ring a bell. Um, but that is Corey. And I can guarantee you that Corey's session um, is going to blow you away. So Corey, are you with us? Yeah, totally. I'm here. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really pleased to be there. And uh, we will start and um, we will be talking about NFTs. So let me share my screen because I have some slide for you guys. Uh, just give me a second. Seems that. Let me share everything. Let's see. Okay, I, I need to to accept just give me a second i cannot share my screen yet uh, apparently uh, because of security thing let me get back in a second perfect so in the meantime i can see we've got a lot of questions about binance academy um, well binance academy is 100 percent free it's just a website. So the same way you go to Binance.com, you can literally go into Google and type Binance Academy and Binance Academy will come up. And once you get there, you will see that Binance Academy has an absolute slew of information. Whatever level you're at, um, you can find something. So whether you're an absolute beginner um, or whether you're a pro who wants to know about algorithmic trading, there are lessons for you on Binance Academy, which include everything we spoke about today. 
Okay, I'm back, but apparently like host disable participant screen sharing. So maybe I can give you the link of my slide. This will be better. What do you think? Sure, let's try that. Um, or Ben, is there any settings I think that you need to... Um, yeah, um, Corey just made you co-host now. Um, you can try again. Okay, let me try. Okay, that's working. Thank you so much. Perfect. Okay, so let's start. So this will be an NFT introduction. This will last around 10 minutes, I think. And I really want you to uh, have some key takeaway. And also I want you to create your first NFT after this session and you will have all the information inside this slide. So please keep with us. So NFT, NFT stands for non-fungible token, but what means fungible? So fungible is something that you can uh, divided. So for example, a Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, but it can also be 0 0.1 Bitcoin. It's the same for the BNB, it's the same for cash. You can own a $5 uh, um, ticket. You can also uh, have uh, only a small section of gold, a small part of oil, etc., etc. But non-fungible, as it's in NFT, so non-fungible and then token are some stuff that you cannot share. So for example, you cannot share like Pokemon card. You can exchange them, but there is only one and unique Pokemon card that is this, for example, this Charizard from this edition. It's the same for Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, it's only one copy. You can have reproduction, and that's the stuff I'm going to show you there, uh, because why this kind of art have value so why a JPEG image like the crypto kitties have value, like uh, this kind of uh, little cats? Why a crypto punk has value, this guy? It's the same reason why art has value. For example, if you take the example of Munch, like the Scream, you can find it on Amazon for 35 uh, euro in my case. And it has been sold for more than 100 million. This is totally a tremendous amount of money. And at the end, if you, are, if you want to showcase to, to, to you, your love, your taste about art, and you put this in your living room, the Amazon version in your living room, maybe some people won't notice that it's a fake. Of course, maybe they will know because uh, it's a, a very famous and expensive, um, expensive paintings. But the thing I want you to understand is that for digital art and for NFTs, uh, it's also about the perceived value. You see what I mean? So the perceived value is really something important. And I want you to have some key takeaways about NFT to know the metrics and to keep in mind some stuff you can, you can have always in your head when you are thinking of investing inside an NFT. Uh, inside an NFT. And this will avoid like um, you to, to maybe fall in the trap of just following the hype at the moment and buying NFTs that are, that are not worth anything. So let me, uh, after those, um, those uh, examples, like the, the example of the, the Mona Lisa or the example of money that are fungible and Mona Lisa is non-fungible, there is only one unique copy, like in one NFT, one unique copy only. Let me uh, give you a bit more uh, theory about that. So the thing you need to know about NFT is that they are unique cryptographic tokens. So a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, there is 21 million Bitcoin. They are all the same. One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin. When you are trading on Binance, exchanging one Bitcoin you add versus a new Bitcoin you want, it will be the same. So it's unique cryptographic tokens. Each token minted, minted means that you create the token as a unique identifier. And this is really important to understand. If we are going just a second to the crypto kitties there, we see that each token have a different design, but even if they were having the same design, meaning if we, have, if we were having like two gray cat like that, they will have a different ID inside uh, the NFTs. So each NFTs are different. They are not interchangeable. They are not tradable. Like uh, for example, the BNB, one BNB is exactly the same as another BNB. This isn't the case for NFTs. And each token has an owner 
And this information is easily verifiable. And that's really important to understand. When you are, for example, the owner of the Mona Lisa, the Mona Lisa is in the Louvre uh, in Paris. When you are the owner of the Mona Lisa, uh, you have a paper around Mona Lisa. You have certificate of authenticity. You have experts uh, that um, told that, OK, this is the original painting. This is the original Mona Lisa. But when we are speaking about NFTs, you have all the information inside the nfts so meaning that if you exchange this little gray cat uh, for bnb if you are trying to sell this cat against bnb you will have the certificate of authentication inside the cat and you will be able to verify it in the blockchain now let's speak about investment or at least let's speak about how to assess the value of an NFT. So the first thing you need to ask before investing in NFT, and there is lots of um, of uh, now, there is lots of a platform where you can find uh, NFTs. For example, it's an Ethereum platform. So, uh, but there is there is the equivalent on BSC, and I will show you in a second. Here, there is lots of artists that are selling this for one ETH. One ETH, it's a lot of money. It's like two thousand. Uh, dollars five ethereum currently that there is someone who wants to buy this five ethereum it's a lot of money why i don't know maybe the guy is an artist maybe this nft is scarce maybe the guy found it beautiful or maybe just the one the guy want to buy it to speculate and to to avoid falling in a trap of buying an expensive nft like that that could be maybe worth i don't know maybe nothing or at least or one ethereum only uh, the next year uh, because at the moment all the nft are maybe a bit pricey and i want you to 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 understand that maybe there is a little bubble on the nft space at the moment because because there is a lot lots of people putting money in this space but this is the thing you need to understand and you need to remember when thinking about uh, nfts so the first thing you need to tell to yourself is is the artist notorious is the guy famous is it a brain? Is, is, is he has lots of followers? He, he is known in this field, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Notorious can be for an artist. It can be for a brand. Uh, can be for anything. Are the NFT you are buying giving you bonus? What I mean by that, I mean that if there is some NFTs that can be used inside uh, inside uh, metaverse world, like virtual reality worlds, for example, these sneakers. Will be you will be able to wear it for at least not you but your character will be able to wear it inside a game it's the same for decentraland decentraland it's a metaverse too virtual worlds and there you can buy uh, some nfts there to to yeah to customize your character but also those nft maybe uh, will give you some values uh, inside the game you will i don't know run faster you will uh, even earn tokens. Maybe you will be able to earn some decentralized tokens or anything. You need to really keep in mind that are oh, this NFT giving me something that I don't have yet? Also, is the NFT giving me some tangible value? And I will take the example of uh, Yellow Earth and uh, King of Leon. Uh, it's, a, it's a group. And so, the people who bought the NFT of King of Leon will be able to uh, have uh, some uh, goodies around the, the, the group. And also, they will be able to uh, have an exclusive uh, access to the next concert they are doing. And it's a bit like a VIP pass, uh, meaning that uh, at the moment, only the people who bought those NFT will be able to uh, go to the concert of uh, King of Lion. The next things to uh, to keep in mind is is this the first edition of something? You know the the Pokemon card, like the first edition of the Pokemon card, or Yu-Gi-Oh, or uh, Magic the Gathering, or anything you want. The first edition have more value than the, uh, the 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 new one because there there is more scarcity around it. It's the first; they are the first one. Also, so it's related to this. Uh, is the NFT scarce? Meaning, is it is, is there a lot of people that can purchase this NFT or not? Because the less people uh, who will able to have this NFT, maybe the more value the NFT will have. And also, there is something really important that I really want you guys to keep in mind. Will I be proud of owning the NFT? 
if no one's want to trade it anymore? I mean, will you be proud of owning, for example, a crypto kitty you bought, even if the price of the crypto kitty decrease and no one wants it? I mean, you can, for example, like love the design of these crypto kitties and say to yourself, okay, I can purchase this crypto kitty for, let's say, uh, one BNB. It's okay for me. It's a good price for me. And I will be proud <laughs> to, to own these crypto kitties for one BNB. Um, so really, if you are not feeling comfortable with uh, owning the NFT, that maybe means that uh, the NFT is not so, so so a good investment for you. So do your research as always, really important to do your research. And now after I've introduced what are NFTs in a really uh, simple and really quick way, I hope at least, let's create your first NFT on Binance Smart Chain. And I promise to you, it's simple. That don't mean that you will be able to make lots of money selling your NFT, but that means that at least you will know how to use uh, the blockchain and you know, at the moment, I think there is really few people in the world who know how to do an NFT on Binance Smart Chain. And so you will be one of the few that have this, as, that have these skills. And um, I think this is totally amazing to, 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 to create your, your first NFT um, uh, easily and to be able to experience uh, how it is. So let's start. You need to go to bakeryswap.org. So the website uh, is there actually. So bakeryswap.org, please go to this URL and not to any other URL. This is the good website, bakery.org. When you arrive there, you are going to click on NFT supermarket. And here you can see that you can mint your artwork. So you are going to click here. And now BSC artist, art information, artwork information, artwork name, artist name, public information, it could be your social media, for example, if you have, if you are a bit famous in your field, a brief introduction, and then you just need to upload your image. The image can be a PNG, a JPEG, or a GIF. After you need to declare that you are the owner of the NFT, and after you just need to mint the NFT. So let's do it. So here I will type, uh, I love uh, BSC, Artist name is BSC Forever. Profile link, I don't have any. Brief introduction, only for the uh, e NFT lovers. And here I will be able to upload the image. So I'm, I will be clicking there. Um, don't judge me because I've done this drawing just before the, <laughs> the, the, the conference. It's extremely poor, I know it. Uh, it's a little pig. It, it, I've done it. It's really, really bad. I know I use paint to do it. I declare that I'm the ownership, but I think no one uh, can do uh, this anymore. It's so bad. <laughs> and now I just need to mint the <laughs> NFT. Here you have the fees. So the fees is all the time. It's written there 0 0.03 BNB. So it's a bit of money. I know you, you need to, to, to spend this to, to be able to mint the NFT. But um, yeah, you need to pay that if you want to, to, to mint the NFT. I'm going to click confirm. And now we are going to wait a little bit and we will have uh, normally a small uh, pop-up that are going to appear here uh, where it will be written, uh, your NFT is launching or something like that. Um, let's wait, uh, yeah, launch artwork, view on BSC scan. Here I can see the transaction of the NFT because like a token, uh, cryptocurrency, classic cryptocurrency, there is a transaction. You can use BSC scan as well to track your your uh, your um, your NFTs, and um, and that's it. Now I've mint my NFT. I will get back to the NFT supermarket here. I will be clicking there, and I will click on my artwork, and I will click on pending because I think it's pending. Yeah, and here are <laughs> my NFT. I have another one because I've made a test just before. And so here I my, uh, my NFT and um, I can then transfer it to another address. So if uh, someone wants the NFT, <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, but uh, you can ping me. Um, or you can also, um, like they are, you, you, once they will be reviewed, you will be able to, to go to exchange and uh, you will be able to trade your own NFTs and try to sell them for some bake. 
here all the all the currency on the NFT uh, supermarket of bakery it's bake, uh, but uh, on other um, on other like for example if we take the example of uh, Treasure Land, uh, it's an NFT marketplace. You can buy NFTs with uh, BNB in this case. Uh, it's a platform that is uh, as that has been created by uh, Digo, Digo.finance, that has been listed recently on Binance. So you can trust this website. Um, no worry about that. And here you can find uh, PancakeSwap uh, NFTs, uh, Farmer Days NFTs, uh, Cocos NFTs, etc., uh, etc. Et so there is a lot. Uh, Alpaca also, lots of tokens there. There is also another option there. It's Bounce. Bounce. The same, you launch the app, you need to be connected to your MetaMask or to your trust wallet. But as I am desktop, I'm using uh, I'm using a MetaMask at the moment, but you can use trust wallet as well to connect on most of the of the dApps. But uh, at the moment, MetaMask has a bit more integration. And there you have the NFT auction hours, you have the token sale, and you can create auction for uh, NFTs as well and see uh, some designs that can be interesting for you and buy, buy it with uh, BNB as well. That's it for me. Just uh, I hope it was really interesting for you. Remember, if you don't know uh, yet from who, where to start, the first step if you want to use the Binance Smart Chain is to go to Trust Wallet, download your wallet, keep your seed phrase in a secure way, and start interacting with dApps. Also, you can use MetaMask. MetaMask is a small uh, account I have here. You will need BNB inside to uh, be able to uh, trade and to uh, perform the action inside. So yeah, just start with Trust Wallet, use MetaMask, and then try to connect to any of the dApps I've showed you today. And click everywhere, guys. You, you can learn by just experiencing the product. It's an amazing journey um, now because we can now experience the product. It wasn't the case three years ago with the ICO wave. Now there is real product, there is real use case with the DeFi, and that's totally amazing. Thank you, guys. Really, thank you for the invitation. Uh, here are the slides. I will just be like uh, very quick, like that. You can see all the tape again when you will be watching the video on YouTube. Thank you a lot. Corey, that was an absolutely amazing session. So. Um, you know, I, I wish you had told me um, that because, um, you know, straight from here, I'm going to be popping onto Bakery Swap and creating my <laughs> um, uh, I promise you that your pig looks a lot better than mine would have. Um, so <laughs> thank you so much for that session. And remember, like Corey said, you can catch the full session on the Binance official YouTube channel. So a lot of you have been asking about that. Also, the last two things, don't forget to join us tomorrow. We had a lot of questions about P2P and tomorrow is everything P2P. And also just so that we know you're coming back, tomorrow we will be giving away 500 US dollars worth of trust wallet tokens or TWT. So we're really excited for tomorrow and thank you to all of our amazing speakers today. Thank you a lot, Brenton. It was an amazing session. Thank Thanks, so Brenton. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. Um, <laughs> bye. See you tomorrow, same time. <clears throat>